This film is about a woman who falls in love with her post-transgender self. Then she and herself gave birth to herself again. Finally, she kills herself with her own hands. It's hard to imagine the mental state of the screenwriter when he wrote this movie. Many people until the end of the film did not understand the film, but feel that their heads are about to explode. The story starts in the autumn of 1945. A mysterious person leaves a box in front of the orphanage. Then, she calls the director. When the director opens the door, she sees an abandoned baby girl. However, after a doctor's examination, the baby girl was healthy. I don't know why her parents abandoned her. Finally, the director took the baby girl in and named her Jane. There are many other children like her here, but Jane is different from them, and she has never been sick since she was a child. When she grew up, she didn't fit in with her peers. She prefers to be alone in her world. And Jane has been extremely powerful since she was a child. She was able to break a car glass with one punch when she was just a few years old. And she had the upper hand in every fight with her classmates. Even boys were no match for her. Jane's academic performance was also very good. For other people, she can instantly calculate the answer in her mind. In this way, Jane grew up day by day. Other families, one after another, adopted all her friends. Instead, the best of her stayed in the orphanage. From then on, Jane saw herself as a loser. Until one day, a man named Robertson found the orphanage. Jane's excellent academic performance caught his attention. He was willing to introduce Jane to a good job. He then took Jane to the airline. There were many other girls here. Next, they had to go through a series of tests. Here they were tested for anti-dizziness, endurance, and physical fitness. And Jane was always the best one. After the final written test, Jane also got the highest score ever. Her excellence also aroused the jealousy of other girls. Jane always fought back with her fists when she was provoked. But this fight also brought her serious consequences. Jane was eventually disqualified by the airline. But then Robertson also found her. He said he would speak to the committee and try to get Jane back into the airline. But Jane couldn't just rely on Robertson's promise. Next, she has to find a way to support herself. So to earn money, Jane chose to work as a nanny during the day and then go to school at night. Jane also took an etiquette class to prove to the committee that she would change. On that day after school, Jane met the man who changed her life. He was not only handsome and rich, but he knew everything about Jane's thoughts. Faced with this man who was truly good to her, the two soon fell in love, but the happy times didn't last long. One night, the man asked her to wait for him in the park for a while. However, he never came back after he left. Since then, Jane has never seen him again, faced with losing her relationship. Jane became more eager to return to the airline. Soon, Robertson found him again. This time he also told the truth. The airline recruitment was just a front, and he was looking for some special people for the government. Because of the job's complexity, he needed employees with no family, no relatives, no past, and no ties to the future. And they need to be physically strong and have an excellent memory. And Jane fits all of these criteria. Just when Jane was hopeful about her future job, she got the bad news. It turned out that her ex-boyfriend had left the seat of life in her belly before he left. She came to the welfare hospital alone to check. After a grueling 10-month pregnancy, Jane also successfully gave birth to a girl. But when she woke up from surgery, the doctor told her another piece of news. It turned out that Jane had both male and female reproductive systems in her body when the doctor performed the cesarean section. But because of the heavy bleeding during the delivery, the doctor had no choice but to give her a hysterectomy. Afterward, the doctor told Jane, because of the special nature of her body, she could have a male reproductive system again after a few more reconstructive surgeries. But this was the only way to keep her alive, for the sake of her child. Jane finally agreed to the surgery. However, only two weeks passed before a mysterious man secretly took her baby away. Jane has never seen her baby since. When she lost all hope, Jane immediately began to transform her body. After a full year and three surgeries, Jane's body finally became male. She then started taking androgenic hormones. This allowed her voice to become lower and deeper, but that wasn't enough. She had to practice talking like a man. During this time, Jane also learned to smoke. And so the days went on, spring and winter, when Jane looked in the mirror again, she had completely transformed into a man. But I don't know if it was an illusion, but Jane felt she resembled the man who had ruined her life. To say goodbye to her past, Jane renamed herself John. Then she put on a man's clothes. To make a living, he went back to the airline. This time he applied for a position as an astronaut. Unbeknownst to him, however, his previous files were kept here. And after examining him, 
The doctors concluded that he was now physically unfit for training, desperate. John had no choice but to find a way to live again. So he came to New York City, a strange city. He then tried many occupations, until he finally found a job as a newspaper typist. During this time, John discovered that many junk articles could be published in publications, and it can also bring a good income to the author. So John immediately had an idea in mind. He bought a stack of emotion magazines and studied them. He soon began to write his articles. Because John was once a woman, his articles were written from a female perspective. In this way, John became a lukewarm writer. One day he came to pour the bar as usual but found that the barkeep had changed. And he not only knew John's pen name but also read his articles. The two of them also had a good conversation. Then, the barkeep used a bottle of spirits in exchange for John to tell the story of his past. However, when the story ended, the barkeep suddenly asked him a question, if he could bring the man who ruined Jane's life back to him, and John would not be held responsible afterward, would he choose to kill that man? John did not hesitate to choose yes, but the barkeep has a quid pro quo. After this, John must take over his job. Seeing that John still refused to believe, the barkeep said he was working for Robertson. Now he is following Robertson's instructions to help him. The barkeep then took John to the basement, then he took a strange box out of the wine pile. It turned out to be a time machine. As long as the wheel on top is set to the corresponding time, they can accurately travel time. And as the barkeep started the machine, the two were immediately transported to a strange warehouse. For the first time, John's body was uncomfortable, but under the guidance of the barkeep, John soon recovered. Now they have returned to the year 1963. April 3rd, and this is the day Jane and the man first met. The barkeep then told John that the mysterious organization he was in was called the Time and Space Bureau, and Robertson was the head of this organization. At first, Jane had almost entered this organization. Their mission was to travel through time to stop the impending disaster. In the meantime, they must disrupt the timeline as little as possible. The Time Bureau allows for fine-tuning, but the variables must be strictly controlled. Any deviation from the action must be terminated immediately. After explaining everything, the barkeep gave John a large wad of money. To the Time Bureau, wealth means nothing at all. As long as John could prove himself this time, he would also become an agent of the Bureau. The barkeep suspected that the man Jane met was the fizzle bomber he had been tracking. The barkeep then gave John the man's address. Because tonight he will meet Jane in 1963 for the first time. So John immediately followed the clues and went to the school. But while he was looking around for the man from memory, a woman suddenly bumped into him. Then John turned around and looked. The girl in front of him looked different from the girl he remembered. This is probably because he didn't like to look in the mirror since he was a child. John didn't realize that he was so beautiful before his sex changed. He was immediately charmed by his old self. John doesn't realize the seriousness of the situation now. Because he understood all the thoughts in Jane's mind, the two soon talked together. And the situation here is also seen by the barkeep. But he didn't seem surprised by what was happening before him. Then he took the time machine and traveled to the year 1970. He was here to stop another explosion caused by Fizzle Bomber. Because he had failed here once before, the barkeep was a few minutes early this time. When he arrived at his destination, he saw a man secretly planting a bomb. The barkeep saw this and immediately raised his weapon, but the sound alerted Fizzle Bomber. Immediately, a fight broke out between the two men. After a round of shooting, Fizzle Bomber quickly took cover. The barkeep immediately began to search around, but Fizzle Bomber was more familiar with the terrain here. The barkeep was soon attacked from behind. The barkeep tried to fight back, but he didn't expect his enemy to know his fighting skills like the back of his hand. Each of his attacks was easily dodged by his opponent. Finally the barkeep was knocked unconscious, but surprisingly, Fizzle Bomber did not kill the barkeep. When the barkeep woke again, he heard gunshots from a distance away. When he arrived at his destination, he found another Time Bureau agent had come to carry out a mission, but he was unfortunately seriously wounded by the explosion. The barkeep saw this and immediately went up to him. When he handed the agent the time machine, he looked at the barkeep with surprise in his eyes. But by this time, he was seriously injured and could not speak. The agent only used his last strength to go back to 1992. And then the barkeep also seems to understand what. When he picked up a timer fragment from the ground, he immediately traveled back to 1964. This is also the second year after John and Jane met. When he visited the hospital to visit Jane's baby, he didn't expect Robertson to arrive. 
It turns out that the barkeep last time to stop Fizzle Bomber is illegal crossing, that's why he met another agent sent by the headquarters. And John also violated the rules in the past year. His encounter with Jane has affected the future, and the Bureau of Time and Space must now correct this mistake. So under Robertson's arrangement, the barkeep quietly took Jane's daughter, he then travels back to 1945 with the child. With a special feeling, the barkeep carefully placed the child in front of the orphanage. He then called the director. After completing everything, the barkeep traveled back to 1963 again. By this time, John and Jane were in love. And by this time, John had realized that the man Jane had met was himself. But this time, John was determined that no matter what, he would not leave Jane again. However, the arrival of the barkeep broke the peace between them. John asked Jane to wait for him in the park for a while. Then he immediately found the barkeep. It turns out he knew the truth but didn't tell himself. However, the barkeep said it was all John's choice. He knew the end of their love but still chose to love. The barkeep then took John back to 1985. And John will take over his job next. It turns out it was all Robertson's plan. Only by destroying John's life to pieces will he volunteer to become a time agent. Now he has nothing to lose. But he will have a great future. Countless crimes will be prematurely terminated at John's hands. Now that the barkeep has completed his last assignment. It's time for him to retire. But the barkeep always regrets that he never caught Fizzle Bomber. However, Robertson believes that their work has become so good because of Fizzle Bomber. The size of the Time Bureau is also stronger because of him. Robertson then handed the barkeep a bag containing the timer fragments he had found last time. It turned out that the Bureau had discovered a new clue. The barkeep now chooses the time and place of retirement. Shortly will be an explosion created by Fizzle Bomber. And after the barkeep retires, his time machine will also fail. He may be in danger then. However, the barkeep finally confirmed the choice. After leaving a recording for John, he soon traveled to 1975. He would spend the rest of his life here as well. But then the barkeep discovers that the time machine that was supposed to fail has made a mistake. At the same time, in 1985 John also officially took over the work of the barkeep. With Robertson handing over a time machine, he finally found his mission and purpose in life. However, John does not know that everything before him is just Robertson's conspiracy. Years later, John receives a mission, he will travel to 1970 to stop an explosion caused by Fizzle Bomber. However, when he was concentrating on dismantling the bomb, a black shadow suddenly flashed from behind him. John is immediately alert and takes out his weapon. As he continued to search, a battle immediately broke out between the two. But after a round of shooting, John found that the bomb countdown was about to end. Then he immediately rushed to the bomb, but it was too late. The bomb exploded in an instant. John was also seriously injured. Just as he struggled to crawl toward the time machine, a figure slowly walked over. Then he handed the time machine to John's hand. And then John also saw the figure in front of him as a former crossover. The barkeep. But John did not have time to think more. He immediately started the time machine back in 1992. However, this time the explosion was too serious. When John woke again, his whole body was already covered with bandages. The accident made John hate Fizzle Bomber with a passion. He was the best thug he'd ever met. He had an uncanny grasp of time. Even if the Time and Space Bureau spent 10 years without being able to lock the suspect. But John believed that given another chance, he could catch Fizzle Bomber. It didn't take long for John's injuries to heal, but his face had been disfigured in the explosion. So the doctors had to give him a skin grafting operation. As the doctor removed his gauze, he couldn't help but exclaim that John was the longest serving agent in the Bureau of Space and Time. But it also made his mental state abnormal. In the latest psychological evaluation, he even had early psychotic symptoms of depression and mania. At this time, John also looked at the mirror, and now appeared in it as an unfamiliar face. This also reminded him of his previous days after the sex change. Because of John's unstable mental state, the Time Bureau decided that as long as John completed his last mission, he could retire and enjoy his life. So John recorded a voice for himself. Until then, we also finally saw John in the plastic surgery turned into the barkeep. And the last task given to him by the Time Bureau was to recruit his younger self in 1978. So that night, the two would meet in the bar. After becoming a Time Bureau agent, John also understood all the truth in the barkeep's recording. Since then, John's life has formed a perfect circle. And the only one who has broken out of this circle is the barkeep after his retirement. When he saw the time machine that was supposed to fail, it went wrong. The barkeep immediately opened the packet Robertson had given him when he left. 
This recorded the purchase records of Fizzle Bomber Timer Parts, and at the bottom, there was the last task set by Robertson, which was to track the shopping bag and find the clues to Fizzle Bomber. Originally, the barkeep did not take this matter to heart. But when he spent a leisurely retirement, the barkeep suddenly remembered something about the taboo of time travel. The barkeep seemed to understand something at that moment. This Fizzle Bomber's activity tracker is like his own after retirement. Then he immediately rushed to where the other party had last appeared. When the figure in front of him turned his head, the barkeep finally saw that the Fizzle Bomber he had been looking for was his future self. The barkeep could not accept it for a while, and he could not believe that he would become a murderer in the future, and that's when Fizzle Bomber said he didn't kill anyone indiscriminately. Then he even took out the future newspaper to testify for himself. It turns out that he first traveled to the future to know the cause of some accidents, and then used the explosion to stop these accidents. Although his actions let many innocent people die, he also saved more people's lives. He will become this way, all because of Robertson's conspiracy. They are both puppets manipulated by each other. It turns out that when Jane had a medical checkup at the airline, Robertson already knew that Jane was an intersex person, but he didn't tell Jane about it. Next, he designed the trajectory of Jane's life instead. The Time Bureau needs a person without a past and future. Only such a person can freely travel through time and will not change history in the future. If he kill him now, then the barkeep will become another fizzle bomber later. If the barkeep wants to break this cycle, he must spare himself in the future. However, ultimately, the barkeep does not hesitate to pull the trigger because he knows this is his destiny. Time paradox is like a snake that bites its tail. The first and the last are connected, but the cycle continues. Only when the barkeep becomes Fizzle Bomber will John's life have meaning. He will meet the pre-transgender Jane, and then the two of them will give birth to their original selves. In fact, from the beginning, they have been trapped in an infinite loop. Well, this is the end of the story. I have tried to restore the logic of the story. If you still do not understand, I cannot help it. If you like this kind of suspenseful drama movie, please comment below the video. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and we will see you next time.